students learned of a tweet from Newman's private Twitter account that included a picture of a slave bearing his badly scarred back. Hey, what's up, you all? Welcome back. I am Van, and now we are all the LFR family. Thank you so much for clicking play. Love y'all. Don't forget to hit that like button, all right? That really helps the videos out. Thank you so much. All right, so yeah, I don't know if y'all heard about this already, but apparently a white law student at Howard University considered the mecca of HBCUs, historically black um, colleges and universities, was expelled from the school, kicked out of the school, and then sued for two, is is in the process of suing right now for $2 million. I heard originally it was like $8 million or something like that, but it's $2 million. Suing for $2 million, and it's a long situation that happened from this. It says, most hated Okay, let me go ahead and take this out right here. Most hated. White student sues historically black college for $2 million over racial discrimination. All right? A white student at Howard University's law school is suing the institution for racial discrimination, alleging the school created a hostile education environment. Michael Newman, the plaintiff, attended Howard University. School of Law starting in the fall semester of 2020 and remained there for just two years until he was expelled in 2022. He is seeking $2 million in monetary damages for pain, suffering, emotional anguish, and damage to his reputation. And apparently this young guy received the scholarship, a yearly scholarship of 26 thousand dollars i think it was a little bit more than that 26.5 or something like that and to receive a scholarship from howard university is crazy howard don't really give out a whole bunch of money but they did to this youngin because he must have been smart as hell frank trample vice president and chief communications officer for howard university said that while he could not comment substantively due to p- um, pending litigation The university is prepared to vigorously defend itself in this lawsuit as the claims provide a one-sided and self-serving narrative of the events leading to the end of the student's enrollment at the university. Hold on, there's a lot more to this. Now, Newman, Newman suffered depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts, apparently, as a result of public ostracism, vilification, and humiliation, the lawsuit claims. Now, at one point, global head of diversity recruiting Reggie McGahey allegedly told Newman that he had become the most hated student McGahey had seen during his tenure at the university, according to the suit. Now, that right there does not sound like anything that you wouldn't want your daggone student anywhere where they're going to be told that type of mess right there. But, you know what I mean? All of this is still alleged. It's still alleged. Let's continue to go with it. So when Newman raised concerns over his treatment to school um, administrators, the law school's dean allegedly denied that Caucasian students at Howard um, Howard Law and Newman in particular faced racial discrimination to any degree. He was like, this does not happen on our university. So relax. Mech gay he. Okay. Mech gay he. OK, so um, so when Newman put this information in front of the school administrators, um, the dean was like, no Caucasian, you nor anybody else has ever faced racial discrimination to any degree on our university. That right there just sounds funky, man. Nobody has ever faced discrimination. No one at the most hit, at the at the Mecca of HBCUs. Are you kidding me? Nah please. So following discussions of Newman's purported um, purported racial insensitivity, students learned of a tweet from Newman's private Twitter account that included a picture of a slave bearing his badly scarred back with the caption, uh-oh, this is about to get good, the caption on this, um, where his slave picture said, but we don't know what he did before the picture was taken according to the lawsuit see i don't know how to take that right there because okay he had a picture of a slave 
burying his badly scarred back and on the caption of the picture it says but we don't know what he did before the picture was taken so that means that he saying yo he got hit clearly we can see that he got beat by his slave master or whomever but did he deserve it that's pretty much what he's saying because we don't know what he did to deserve this but let's go on all right hopefully y'all are following me i'm trying to keep it as neutral as possible until we figure out what's going on newman claimed the tweet was mocking commentators who attempt to explain away videos of police brutality by claiming the victim must have committed wrongdoing before the video started now hold on hold on let's talk about that because there are people who sometimes sometimes like to jump in there and just create their own narrative before they find out any information. Context is everything, all right? That's, that's all I'm saying. Sometimes context is everything. So if he was just making fun of that and other people online are making fun of certain things like that as well, you know, making fun of it starts the conversation. So he's like, let's do it. Let's talk about it. I think that was, I think that's a good tie in right there. All right. So he alleged that students responded with references to his race, gender, sexual preference, age, and personal appearance. Race, gender, sexual preference, age, and personal appearance. The trouble started when a university shifted to remote learning at the start of the pandemic, meaning students communicated through purely online forms and through group me chats newman claimed in court papers okay so now he has to mix it up with kids who are making fun of him through the group chats and he has to face what he did what he wrote on his own private twitter because people went and done, did some digging they went and did some digging on the white boy that just so happened to be in our hbcu why are you here brother why are you here as an hbcu why are you here that's what that's how they feel. So after a symposium featuring an African American speaker in the run up to 2020 election, Newman said he posted on a professor's forum page asking if further dialogue could be had on whether one black voters didn't question turning to government for solutions and two reliably voting for the same party every election disincentivized um, both parties from responding to the needs of the black communities you know what that's actually these are actually good points right here this this is actually good points he brought up um ideas as to how come you guys want the such a large government why do you want government to be involved in everything and why do you always vote the same exact way every single time? Does that make sense to you? It don't make sense to me either. Because if you vote the same way every single time, both parties don't have to cater to you anymore. Why? Because one party will take you for, uh, for granted, just continue to promise you stuff, but not do a damn thing for you because they know that you're going to vote for them anyway. And then one party will think that no matter what they do or what they offer you, they're not going to get your vote anyway. So they'll just move on with business as usual. Make it fair for everybody. And if you want to join their side, you join their side. And I didn't even point out which side was what. But I'm sure you guys get it by now. All right. But those are some good points in my opinion. In my opinion, those are some good points. All right. So some students responded negatively to Newman's post and reached out to school administrators, prompting Newman's removal from one of his group chats for the class, according to allegations. So because he said that, they said, yo, we need to get him up out of our group chat. For real. We need to get him up out of our group chat right now. Get him up out of here. Because we didn't like the fact that he was spitting all this truth. We didn't like that, that he was spitting all his truth. <laughs> Newman also described feeling utterly disenfranchised at the school and compared himself to a black student at a primarily white university, a PWI. The student response was again largely negative with some calling his comment offensive, he claimed. Okay, check this out, guys. All right, so he's going through these things right now, and he's saying that my experience here as a white man, a young white guy at 
um, a predominantly black university, an HBCU, that's what it's called, is the same experience as a, uh, as a black dude, a black person at a PWI, predominantly white institution, I mean, institute or university, all right? And they said, oh my gracious, we are offended again. Oh man, he said something else that offended. Did he offend you? He offended me. Did he offend you? He didn't offend you? Well, you should be offended, and I'm going to tell you why. So now they're super offended because he is saying, yo, y'all are still messing with me, and I feel utterly disenfranchised. This is crazy. You got to remember that this young guy is a thinker. He's not there trying to kiss nobody's butt, and he decided to go to Howard University out of all of the schools that he went, I mean, that he was accepted in. If he was accepted in Howard University and he received a 26, I believe, $26,500 scholarship to attend their law school, this brother had to be smart, all right? And I'm assuming, I haven't seen his grades, I haven't seen his SAT scores or any of that right there, but I will say that based off of what I know to be true about Howard University and their acceptance policies and how tight their pockets are when it comes to giving out money, This guy had to be a bad boy. All right, so let's continue. Newman repeatedly apologized for offending anyone, even though he probably didn't even feel like he offended anyone, but he wanted to make peace with people. Like, yo, can't we all just get along? All right, that probably wasn't, that was of poor taste. Okay, stressing, he was seeking to learn not just law, but to learn the thoughts and experiences of people of color as well. That's why he decided to come to an HBCU in the first place. But Newman allegedly faced more overt hostility, with many students starting to refer to him as Mayo King, a perceived reference to his race, and White Panther, And students claimed that controversies that they blamed on Newman had caused severe stress and distracted them from their studies. Taking the opportunity to just complain, 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 complain. That's it. Like, at this point, white white, Mayo King and, and White Panther is what we call him. He's starting, he's starting too much stuff. What do you mean, what did he say disrespectful to us? Well, first of all, he said, uh, what's the first thing he said? He said, um, he said that we, we in love with big government. He's saying that we in love with big government. And then he's going to say that we're going to vote any way. We're going to vote Democrat regardless of how they treat us. And, and, and that doesn't help. I can't believe he said that. I'm offended. I am appalled that he would say something like that. That's offensive. And it's racist. So... Mayo King got to go. So that's where it is right now. So they called him Mayo King. They called him White Panther and all this other stuff. Newman tried to remedy the situation by sending out a four-part letter to explain his views, but the effort was labeled a manifesto. Oh, you know what it means when somebody write a manifesto? When somebody write a manifesto, they think that it's about to be a school shooting. They see... This is what happens. This right here is one of the words that when you start spreading this around right here, it starts to get dirty. It starts to get real dirty, okay? Uh, With one student accusing him of manipulating classmates' emotions as a social experiment, the lawsuit said. The letters allegedly resulted in Newman's removal from a second class-wide group chat. So he has been kicked out of two group chats at this point because apparently he has been labeled the troublemaker, apparently, all right? Yeah, that's that's what he was doing, Lisa Marie. He was white, <laughs> white splaining. Um, School of Law Dean Danielle Holly later secretly recorded a Zoom meeting she called with Newman and McGahey, during which she suggested Newman transfer to another school, according I mean accusing him of racially harassing classmates, according to allegations. Yo. The school of law dean, come on now, come on now. You are in the school of law and you are the dean of the school of law. And you're going to secretly record him in a Zoom meeting that you did not run by him. And then inside of that secretly um, secretly recorded meeting, you told him, no, you suggested that he transfer to another school. What? And y'all are surprised that he's suing the dag on school. Y'all are ridiculous, man. So during a digital hall, I mean, a digital town hall att- um, attended by 300 participants to discuss controversies surrounding Newman, Holly allegedly characterized 
numerous letters as disturbing in every sense of the word, according to the suit. Wow. She allegedly blocked him from using several functions to try and speak up in his defense, even disabling the chat function and turning off his camera. Come on, man. Come on. You have the... <laughs> all right. Y'all see what's happening here, right? So, because... All right. So, let's, 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 let's back this up a little bit. At this point, he could have been... He could have been being... He could have been a troll. What if he was a troll? What if he decided to go to Howard University just to troll the other students? Was that a reason for him to be kicked out of all of those group chats, disabling him to be able to communicate to be able to take up for himself, to be, they're, they're saying that, yo, we can't work like this. We can't work under these conditions. So we're going to kick him out of this group chat, and then we're going to kick him out of another group chat, and then the dean of law school, <laughs> the dean of law school is not only going to secretly record him, but then tell him that he needs to transfer because he is messing with the other kids. Like, we can't take this. We can't take this at all. But then at the town hall that they hold, you you block him from being able to even respond and you cut off of it, um, cut off his camera. No, this is not looking good for Howard University. Not at all, in my opinion. But I do want y'all to see this right here. Allegedly. OK, we want to stick there. We want to stick there. She allegedly she allegedly blocked him. OK. All right. So we are moving forward. Holly and Newman wound up filing simultaneous complaints, all right? So the dean and the student end up filing simultaneous complaints with Holly accusing Newman of continual harassment of member, um, I don't know what this is, of Howard Law community and disturbance of the learning environment at the School of Law. At the same time, Newman claimed Holly had perpetrated, um, perpetuated threats, discrimination, and a hostile academic environment. Wow. Wow. So this is the Dean right here that said, yo, wow, Dean Holly. Come on. Come on, Dean Holly. Come on. Now with that big old pretty smile, this come on. Nah, I don't like this at all. Let's move forward. In a panel reviewing Holly's complaint, the school determined that Newman was responsible and ruled that he should be expelled to his knowledge. Okay. To his knowledge, Newman's um, complaint was never adjudicated, the suit claimed. So when he filed a complaint, they never even addressed it. They just went off of the Dean Holly, Danielle Holly, and they just expelled the guy. Didn't even get him his chance in court. Oh, well, his chance amongst his peers. So Newman appealed the ruling, but a second review panel allegedly reached the same conclusion despite the revelation that Holly had supplied the first panel with evidence that Newman never saw, which he argued amounted to secret evidence. OK, now Newman's lawyers um, will try to prove the school um, broke its contract with Newman, a student who attended on a scholarship after a series of incidents and accusations led to multiple review panels and hearings that resulted in his expulsion according to the lawsuit. So there you have it. That's the whole thing right there. Um, and we need to get down to the nitty gritty of this. I want to hear what y'all have to say in full. Okay. I want to hear what y'all got to say about the entire thing in full, because uh, all we have to go off of is um, the, I think the timeline gave me an idea of who I will back in this. I will actually back Newman. I will back Newman in this because honestly, he never had his day in court. Um, here you have a young guy who is trying to express his freedom of speech and he's being canceled in his own school. That's all that happened. That's it. Here we are, a bunch of lawyers. We are being trained to intelligently argue our differences of facts that, we, um, that we, um, we've come up with on any particular subject or topic and at the end of that shake hands and move on to the next case over and over and over and over and over again so you mean to tell me that you allowed these students to get butt hurt by this young man's expressing himself how he did about um about and comparing the the slave to um police brutality and 
And essentially, he was trying to take up for them. He was actually trying to um, form an opinion that will that will support what they stood for. He was trying to support what they stood for at the end of the day. He was doing a little bit of satire, but he was doing it in his own way. Now, when a child decides to dedicate four years of their life at any university, it's a, it means a great deal to them. Like, it's not for play play. This young guy could have gone anywhere. You think he want to go to a, a, historical, a historically black university so that he can be picked on, so that he can be um, discriminated against? Nah, not at all. But one thing I saw was those students were extremely sensitive. So were and so was the deans and the other administrators who was backing the sensitivity of these children and did not even give this guy a chance. And this, in my opinion, in my opinion, was racially motivated. It was racially motivated and they was calling them names like Mayo King and White Panther and all this other sugar honey iced tea that meant absolutely nothing. Secretly, secretly recording his Zoom meetings, not even giving them a chance to speak up on his own behalf. Is this how y'all teach our future lawyers? Nah, not at all, man. Not at all. Who am I? Who am I, though? I'm not a college graduate. I'm a college dropout. All right. I dropped out to just raise my family. I wanted to work. I said, yo, I didn't have a father in my house. I'm going to make sure that my kids have a father in their house. Period. All right. So that's what I decided to do. So I can't really speak on higher education too much, but I do have a bit of common sense. I do have children that all went through college. One I'm about to go through right now. And I can speak on these sort of things, but what they did was they made matters worse for, for freedom of speech, man. In my opinion, but it's not about me. It's about you. Y'all let me know whatever y'all want me to know about this in the comments below.